absolutely. Um, so you have to memorize domain, kingdom, file, class, order, family, genus, species. You just have to. Um, and that's a bummer. But luckily, you guys are smart. And luckily, we're all about dumb ways to remember stuff. So you're all going to come up with better ways to remember that one than the standard. The standard is, at least the one I see the most these days, is Dear King Philip, come over for good spaghetti. All right, it's fine. It's fine. But you can do better. Um, I mistakenly put the due date for that extra credit opportunity of coming up with my favorite two mnemonics as tomorrow. It's actually today, but it's today at 2.30. Okay, so by 2.30 today, I would love to see a bunch of cool mnemonics from you. Let me show you three that I've already gotten that are, I think, already better than what we're working with here. Ready? Remember, it's domain, kingdom, file, and class, order, family, genus, species. How about derpy koalas persistently cried out from growling stomachs? Not bad. How about don't kill Phil casually or fat gangsters, Sue? Pretty good. That one's easy to remember. Or dirty crabby patties cooked on Fridays. Geez, SpongeBob. It's pretty good. All right. You can do as good, if not better. Uh, I want to see those by 2.30. Um, extra credit if I really like it. Okay. Okay, grab your nuts. So, uh, from Darwin, basically trying to build the first tree of life based on his descent with modification idea. But all he's got is physical similarity. That's all he's got is, you know, okay, those things look alike. Maybe they're related. Where, it, it, what that meant was he made a lot of mistakes. You know, just basing the tree on the things that look alike, you get fooled a lot. There are a lot of critters that look alike, but not because they're related, right? There's that analogous thing with convergent evolutions. It could make you think that, for example, a dolphin and a shark are very closely related when they're not as closely related as you think. What we aim for with modern groupings, with modern classification, is we want those evolutionary relationships solid. We want to group things just based on how long ago they had their common ancestors. And with DNA, we can do that very effectively to a point. But at a certain point, we have to decide where to draw those lines. Right? We know that a species, for example, our, our sort of thumbnail definition of species is, okay, can they interbreed and make fertile offspring? Okay, that's a fairly easy way to draw a line. But what about the line between different families or different um, uh, orders or classes? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Gavin, you had a question. Yeah. How would you like, how would you like the family of offspring? What's the family of it? Yeah, like an offspring. Well, the class is aves, which is what the, the one that all birds belong to. Uh, and then the order, I don't really know. And then the family after that, I don't know it either. But you, you can look it up and be like, if like if that had been one of the ones I gave you last night, you'd know, right? And so that assignment you did last night started to give you a sense of where these groupings are, right? That all mammals belong in one group and all rodents belong in another group and, and, and so and so. But the way we separate those things from each other is one of those things that takes a while to, to sort of figure out. One of the things we base groupings on this is a new term you're going to need to get familiar with pretty quick. We call them derived characters. I don't know why they're not called derived characteristics, but we call them derived characters. They are characteristics, and you can think of them as kind of like milestones. Things that show up in evolution, and they stick. They're so good that they don't go away.
in every branching descendant of that first group to have the derived character, you see that derived character. It shows up and it is a success. So those things that we kind of think of as milestones are sometimes a really good way to separate out one group from the rest. They're a good way to separate and track evolutionary history. When you find one, when you pick a derived character and everything after it has that derived character, that group, that branch of the evolutionary tree, we call that a clade. So a few new terms here, derived character, clades. And taking a set of derived characters and using them to diagram out a whole family tree of living things, we call that a cladogram. And that's what you're going to learn to do today. And believe it or not, there's a whole kind of branch of biology that deals with deciding how to group these things and what the proper way to split them off is. Uh, sometimes it's called systematics. Um, we're going to call it cladistics. But the cladogram, we're going to spend quite a bit of time playing with just because it's such an effective way of figuring out stuff about evolution. You're gonna learn how to build one yourself today. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, you'll be playing with a, a computer game that has you building cladograms and learning stuff. Not by coincidence, cladograms tend to be all over the state test. So it's gonna be useful to you in the near future. So here's an example of some information you might get that doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you make a picture out of it. Here's a list, don't write these down, but here's a list of derived characters. Being eukaryotic, that's something that shows up and then sticks around, like being multicellular, having a segmented body, having jaws, limbs, hair, and placenta. All of these are steps along the way to modern mammals, okay? And we might give you a chart that looks like this, it's pretty tough to make sense of it first. But notice basically what it's showing you is that, okay, here are the seven derived characters we listed right here. And here's the critters that have them. And we're basically building on one derived character each time. Amoeba, that's a one-celled organism, but it is a eukaryote. It does have a nucleus. So it has that first derived character, but that's kind of where it gets off the evolutionary bus. It right? doesn't get any more derived characters. Still alive today, not extinct, but it hasn't come along for the ride to mammalhood. All right. Sponge adds one more. Okay, this is actually an animal. It has multicellularity and it's eukaryotic, but that's where it gets off the bus. It doesn't have any of the rest. You see where this is going, right? But this is a bad way to show this information. It's hard to get meaning out of. So instead, we do this. Don't draw it yet, but you are going to draw it. And what we do is we put the derived characters right there on the trunk of the tree, right before the first critter that has them. So right here, eukaryotic shows up. That's where amoeba gets off the bus. Bus just doesn't get any more of these derived characters that are going to be on this main trunk. Just like multicellularity, cool, that shows up, and then sponge gets off the bus. Segmented body, earthworms have that. Salmon. Fish in general, jawed fish have jaws, limbs, you get something like a lizard. Then hair, a typically mammal characteristic. There is a mammal though, a type of mammal that has the hair, but not one of the final characteristics that typifies most mammals, which is having a placenta. If I can put a cat there. You know what placenta is? It's the have you heard of the afterbirth when, when, a, when a kid's born the thing that comes out afterwards this weird gross disc thing 
with all the blood vessels in it. It's basically the interface between the, uh, the mom's blood and the baby's blood, right? That didn't develop until uh, marsupials basically got off the bus, which is why marsupials need the pouch, right? And the, the further development in there. So that's an example of a cladogram. Stuff to watch out for before you draw this. Things that students make mistakes on when drawing cladograms. The things I have to take off points for. Number one, unless it's extinct, everything should make it to the top of this kind of cladogram, right? They're all here. It might have gotten off the evolutionary bus as far as these things we're looking at, but it's not extinct. Time goes this way on this. They all make it to the top unless they're extinct. Secondly, the derived character has to come before the first group that has it. Don't ever put the dots on the branch points because then you don't know whether this critter got it, you know, came before it or after it. Always do that. And then finally, the last critter should be on the straight limb, okay, not on its own side limb. If that makes sense. Questions? Draw away. <clears throat> you get what we're doing? This is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to take a chart like I showed you on the last slide and build a diagram like on this slide. Questions? Who needs more drawing time? Raise your hand. Okay, so again, we're going to spend quite a while coming back. You know, we'll, we'll move on, but then we'll keep coming back to cladograms. You're going to see them again and again in different forms. Oh, look at this ridiculous kangaroo. It's like hanging me. Um, like this. We don't have to use physical derived characters. We can do like you did with the molecular clock activity and just count amino acid differences and build a very similar timeline, very similar cladogram. That one's hemoglobin rather than cytochrome C, but still, same deal. You know how to do that. This is basically a cladogram without the derived characters. Um, okay, don't draw this, but this is where we're going next, just to give you kind of a sneak peek. Sorry for the interruption. Isaiah Robinson, could you come to the office, please? You said there was three domains. It's a three domain system. Domain is the top level. Domain, kingdom, final class, order, family, genus, species. Here's what that looks like. This is basically the cladogram of all life on Earth. Notice the question mark at the very beginning. We'll get to that soon. Um, but these three domains basically go one, two, three, and this one and this one are just bacteria. In fact, this one is bacteria that look like, that, that are still living in conditions like the early Earth. This is what we would consider modern bacteria. This one is everything else. The main eukarya is animals, plants, fungi, and protists. Okay, so that's where we're going. We'll kind of go through each domain and kingdom and learn some stuff about them. But for now, let's learn about. Cladogram. So I've got an activity for you. In a second. <clears throat> 